Hello everybody, my name is Chris and uh, this time we have a request from you guys. So I mean Generations is right around the corner and um, we have some time left for some requests from you guys. We asked you a few weeks ago what you wanted to see and uh, Matthew had a great idea and he suggested kicking a monster to death with only critical kicks. When I first read his comment I was like what? This does actually work? I, I had no idea that you can actually get critical kicks. And um, we tried it out and it worked perfectly fine and um, we, we thought about what monster could we do and uh, I really wanted to do an Akantor so I was like guys let's try to kick an Akantor to death and everybody was like what Chris this this wouldn't would never work because an Akantor has way too much HP and uh, we eventually decided to give it a try we have a really nice strategy uh, which worked very good and um, yeah have fun watching the video and happy hunting So I rather wanted to make this video more informational for you guys instead of just uploading a boring 15 minutes time lapse. And indeed there are some really interesting things behind this video and for ultimate such as damage calculation and uh, I really wanted to tell you guys about that. Our set comes with Critical God, Challenger plus 1, Guard plus 2 and lastly Evade Extender. This set works with any Critical Eye plus 14 triple slot charm and if you ask me it looks super cool because of the Voloki mask. We use the Lorijan Greatsword, which has 65% base affinity, which is as far as I know the highest affinity Greatsword in the game. It gets an increase by 30% from Critical God having a new base of 95%. The last 5% come from Challenger plus 1, which normally grants 10% affinity, but since 100% is the max value here, we just get 5%. We own for defense, since neither life nor attack honing makes a difference. Kicking with a greatsword does not increase your life, even with a life hone. And raw attack doesn't matter at all here. So we were thinking about kicking Gogmazios in the first place, but soon our hopes were completely gone looking at his life, since he only appears in G-Rank and his life literally is brutal. According to Kiraniko, he has a total of 18,000 HP which is more than 4 times the amount of HP of what a high rank Seregios has. So we asked ourselves, what still massive monster should be our target for this project? Matthew suggested an Aroshi Kirin, which is on the one hand a good choice since Kirins have very low life even in G rank, but I'm almost sure you guys know how annoying Kirin can be jumping all around the map and paralyzing you with his thunder wave. And Rushi's freezing attack isn't much better either, so we eventually came up with a Cantor. But here's the thing. We imagined a Cantor to be way more cooperative in terms of his moveset, which didn't happen as planned. So we would have needed like 60 minutes plus in order to kill him this way, which is impossible due to the 50 minutes cap. Audio jungle. So we had to come up with a strategy. And what works better for a Cantor or Candles than flash bombs? Right, pretty much nothing else. So we went ahead and brought 15 flash bombs each, with a total of 60 flash bombs. It should be possible, right? So we were using all 15 flashes, one player after another, which is working for almost 10 minutes here. And uh, I think this is quite an impressive amount of time since it doesn't really require huge skills but just a little bit of timing. Those 9 plus minutes allowed us to throw a couple hundreds of kicks in, which would otherwise have taken forever literally. So, let me tell you something about damage calculation once again. If we take a closer look at the values from Kiraniko here, which we are now assuming to be right because otherwise we don't have any idea what the real HP and defense values are. So Kiraniko says Akanor has 600 HP. 
For example, the hiring Seregios, which we kicked to death one year ago, had just 4200. On top of that, considering that Akanor is Rage pretty much the entire run, he has a 0.8 defense, meaning that our kicks even deal more damage, but more of that later. Let me first explain how the damage stuff works with kicking. As you guys probably know, those damage figures shown under equipment and status do not reflect the actual damage amount you deal, because otherwise a 600 HP Akantor would be dead after just 5 draws with a max relic greatsword. Those values have to be calculated with different multipliers, such as the motion values or sharpness multiplier, in order to get the true damage figure in the end, which is much lower than the status shown in the weapon itself. At least in 3 ultimate and 4 ultimate it works like this, because I think in generations and cross we have the true damage figures back. But here's the thing, we just use kicks, right? And the kicks, which you can perform with a greatsword, do exactly the same amount of damage a normal kick does with the weapon sheath, which is exactly 1-2 damage. Just 1 damage, so a cantor would need a total of 60 100 kicks in order to die. And this would be impossible to pull off. But you guys know Monster Hunter and all the beautiful little things which you can take advantage of, right? So in this case, the most important thing was Feline Kickboxer. Feline Kickboxer increases kick damage by 500%. Cool, now we got 5 true damage per kick. And this is how we kicked Seregius to death basically, with around 840 kicks, not counting Seregius defense here. But now, there's something slightly different from last time. Right, it's a critical kick, which unlike the normal kick, only works with a great sword. So you guys probably know the critical multiplier is 1.25 meaning that we do 6.25 true damage now. The last factor we have to include now is a counter's defense and rage mode, which according to Kureniko is 0.8. So the calculation would work like this. 1 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 1.25 divided by 0.8 and that's 8.71. So since this is not a round figure, I don't know for sure, but I am assuming that 4 ultimate rounds up the figure. So we would have 9 true damage. 9 true damage versus 6000 HP would be 667 kicks in total. So this should be everything which affects the kick damage. And before anyone is asking in the comments, weak points do not affect our damage calculation since we're attacking with true damage, not weapon values. So it pretty much doesn't matter if you hit a cantor's head, his front legs or his tail, you do the same amount of damage. So we use here guard plus 2 in order to effectively avoid damage we would normally receive due to the low guard protect from great swords, as well as to take advantage of the lower recoil. Evade extender is especially useful in this case, since we almost never sheath the sword, with two exceptions, when a cantor uses dig or when we want to take an item. You may already have experienced a counter's annoying effect which gets active if you get hit, which is shown by this little red shield icon next to your hunter's name. It means half defense, which sucks because 786 defense are now sub 400. And uh, a counter can pretty much one hit you with this gigantic air beam mesh attack. So what can you do to prevent that, or at least negate this effect? Well. Sadly, null berries ain't working, so you have to either throw a steam bomb, which you only have 3 of, or what we did a lot, use an adamant seed or mega armor skin. While a cantor's effect does cancel your defense boost from food and adamant seeds, you just have to use another seed to cancel a cantor's effect and get back the defense buff. In addition to that, we only used some cold drinks, mega dash juices and a lot of life powders, which actually saved my life once when I was pinned. But being pinned isn't bad, because your fellow hunters have some time to get some extra kicks in.
In the end, we managed to kill him in 26 minutes 52 seconds, which is quite impressive, but again, it doesn't really require much skill or something. I really have to apologize guys, because this video is literally one week late. Um, we did not upload any video last week, so... Um, but this is basically due to uh, me. I wanted to make this video more informational for you guys. It took me a way more time to um, edit this video and uh, I have a lot of work lately. So anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You have learned maybe something and, or maybe you found it kind of interesting. Um, I personally, I think uh, Monster Hunter is so interesting if you think about all the damage calculation thing, what's behind Monster Hunter actually, what's behind slaying monsters. And uh, and yeah guys, so thanks for watching, have yourselves a great day, night, evening, or day, or night, or money back, and I catch you guys on the next video.